music is like root work magic that's pulled up from the soil it echoes on the stony hills and spins in the tall grass by the sea it soothes the savage beast and pierces the soul of a man music is that old witchcraft writes your true name on a scrap of paper and makes you dance undignified like King David. This is the Hoodoo Music Podcast. This is the very ninth episode of the Hoodoo Music Podcast, and uh, this episode got a band out of uh, the Piedmont area, Anderson, upstate band in general, called Solarist. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going Hi. on? What's up? How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm man. I'm 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 just I'm just pleased as punch to be here. I'm just I'm tickled. Tickled pink, are you? Tickled pink. No, <laughs> so tickled turquoise. You got to keep the alliteration going. <laughs> yeah, tickled yeah. Tickled turquoise. turquoise. That's that's a band name right there. So, how long have you guys been together as Ben? Uh, I started this band about five years ago, uh, and and we I, I had a lot of trouble doing anything uh, with with some of the people that were in the band originally, and uh, I just started the band over like a fresh reboot with with Drew and uh, Nick here, and uh, I think we've been together what about six maybe seven months nick's the newest edition i think nick's about about two months old he's two months old man you yeah. look you look uh pretty pretty know, tall I for two months old Fresh out the womb. why don't you guys go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves uh who are you what do you play hey i'm nick i play guitar rhythm guitar backing I'm, vocals backing vocals yeah i am drew and uh i play the drums i'm jacob and uh I'm not in this band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jacob's actually from State of Illusion, a band we have a lot of respect for, and uh, he, he he's guest appearing with us actually. Yeah, but, I I realized so years ago I was in a band, and I realized oh I we played a show with State of Illusion like eight years ago or nine years ago, couple, probably a couple shows. Probably I think at least one, if not two or three. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Dude. Back when the unknown that. was still open. Yeah, but uh, I don't know where that is. You wouldn't because it's unknown. But, uh, <laughs> but they, I mean, they did a role, good job. Cool. My role in the band is uh, is I, I I produce these guys. So oh, cool. Them, do all that stuff. And you did some backing vocals on the session tonight. Yes. And, and extra guitar work too. So that was good. Because he's like a little angel. Uh, but I'm I'm Tom. I'm lead singer, um, rhythm guitar, songwriter. The brains and the brawn, but not the look. <laughs> yeah, that's what they have. I'm Drew definitely for. ugly as sin. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you're a, you're a beautiful player. man with that long, flowing hair and that excellent beard on fleek tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, what, <laughs> why don't we talk a little bit about this first song? Uh, you know, where'd you write it from? You know, illustrate comes from comes from a, a place of frustration. I think uh, I really don't like to to be too specific as to. Uh, what the songs are about. I I love other people's interpretations more than I do my own, but it's a real sarcastic song. And, um, in the sense that people always trying to tell you what to do and telling you how to, how to do things better and, and, uh, how you're supposed to do everything. But I I find that most of the people who tell me how to do things, I do it my way and it it turns out just as good, if not better sometimes. So I like that. Um, not right So tell me how I'm supposed to feel So I might learn to deal with all these pills And sleepless nights Another chance to waste a life I'm
So how long have each of you been playing, uh, you know, your respective instruments? Um, vocally, not very long because I suck. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Guitar-wise, I've been playing since I was, I was 12. Um, I kind of reinvented the way I play guitar roughly three, four years ago by opting in for a different tuning. Okay. What, what kind of like, what's, what's, you know, obviously standard tuning is E-A-D-G-B-E. Um, so what do you, <laughs> eat all day, what? get big early. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, so what's, what, what's the tuning you're playing now? Uh, I use C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, C sharp. I almost want to call it like an open, open C sharp tuning, but I have no idea what to call it. That would pro- yeah. It'd, It'd be like a C sharp power chord tuning basically. Yeah. Like, it, it feels a little redundant. And when, when you say it like that, but it, it, I got in the habit of, of trying to accent myself and not n- wanting the second guitarist. So <clears throat> when I did that, it was to, to kind of harmonize with myself and I just okay. got so used to it. It, it just grew on me and I, I actually prefer it over everything now. It actually kind of sucks because every guitar in this room is tuned to that tuning. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a guy like me who's a drummer, you and, shouldn't have and knows have a guitar very little anyway. about guitar. Come on now, you know. <laughs> now see, don't let me tune a guitar. <laughs> Please oh, don't let me hands. tune a guitar. But uh, you know, you, you try to grab a guitar because you remember a lick from a song, or you, you know, you're trying to show off a little bit. Like hey, uh, you know, hey, it's I can not play happening. this. It's really not happening because. Uh, the whole bottom end of the guitar or top end of the guitar is off. I've been playing drums since about, since I was 10. I'm on, I'm 30 now. So about 20 years off and on doing different stuff. I, I was a, I was a band nerd in high school. So what up to all you band nerds? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Band nerds rock. Hold up. Can we, can we have a time out for a second? Drew, you said you were like 28 before this. No, like I'll be thirty in January, so I'm thirty. So, uh, but yeah, lies I, about his age. he's he's ageless. He's <laughs> he's ageless being. Yeah, you know, you can refer to me as Drucifer, but um, <laughs> you know, so I started when I was about ten, on and off. With hate you know, your heart. Uh, me and Tom actually we grew up down the street from each other. We weren't that far away, and we'd get together and play. But he'll tell you I had such. ADD, ADD, like it was, it was so bad. It was disgusting. That like we would start out playing a song, like we'd be, we'd play Master of Puppets, and by the time he got to the solo, I was already neck deep in a third song that I decided I was going to play because I got tired of playing Master of Puppets. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've since calmed down. Now he's on medication. But uh, you know, we got back together. He said he needed. He said he needed some help trying to put some stuff together and i came back in and uh you know this is he's been a blessing yeah absolutely awesome yeah i think i've been playing since i was maybe 12 13 years old um all the music i listened to from my dad and what i found out and got a guitar i think the i think the first month i had it i probably broke it down to nothing my family did not like that until <laughs> I rebuilt it. But, um, yeah, I've been playing since I was 12, and I just play regular old six strings, nothing fancy. And I just like it heavy, I guess. Well, um, you know, what, what's, what's kind of uh, influenced, you know, your personal style, you know, and this is ev- everyone. What do you listen to that shapes the way you play? Huh, I got one for you, all right? <laughs> the my BGs. dad was a huge metalhead, but you got to remember how long ago that was. So I grew up on Metallica, Iron Maiden, Megadeth, Danzig, but Kiss. God help me, Kiss was the thing that Dad <laughs> played on the radio all the time, and everybody gives Kiss a lot of crap. You know, they they get one of the best stage shows you'll ever well, look, see. I mean, like, why would they just want to rock and roll all night and party every day, right? Of course, man. Like, makeup. who doesn't want to do that, right? But, you know, and a lot of their songs are about exactly what rock and roll is. It's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what they got. Is that what that's crazy? Yeah, I mean, you know, my dad, it, it, this is something I'll remember about him forever. He would have us in the car, and every single song that came on, 
he would get us to name the song. And then when we got really good at that stuff, it was, okay, what's the name? What's the band? What album did it come on? Who was playing on that album? You know, we, you know, we did this stuff forever. So, you know, it was all that kind of old, a lot of hair band, a lot of older stuff. And then, you know, you get into Slipknot, really, really dig some of that stuff. Kill Switch, you know, all the way through Corn. I mean, but then you go back, I, like, I really dig Parliament. I really dig Bella Fleck. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, I'm going to tell man. you right now, Victor Wooten can play a bass better than I've ever seen anybody play a bass. And, you know, Rush was a big thing. Who who, who doesn't love Neil Peart? You know, in Dream Theater, that prog rock stuff is awesome stuff, man. So all of that kind of bleeds in somewhere. Definitely. Sure. I, I just want to throw this out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, recording Drew is a, like... Here you go, bro. I got you. It's a, it's a blessing, man. Like, I mean, he talks about Pert and all those guys, and I mean, that guy can play the drums, and one of the best. I, I he doesn't necessarily always show what he can do, and I think that's a talent in itself or a skill in itself. And uh, being able to kind of hold back and restrain and, and uh, yeah. get it just right instead of trying to be flashy. Yeah, he's really. But I mean, like, I have to do. I mean, everybody edits their drums, right? I have to do very little editing on Drew. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, I, I like a, uh, I like I like his style. That's that's a lot of the reason why I picked him up. Again, is uh, his ability to to cater to a song, and and he hits them so hard all the time that, I mean, I mean you can't ignore him. him. <laughs> I mean, like he, it, it's like you're, he's like, listen to me, you son of a bitch, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I cannot express how much of a blessing that's been. Um, and I just want to throw this out there real quick. Also, if if memory serves, Drew was just going to fill in and, and just record. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't going to be the actual drummer. And then when he actually heard what was going on, was like, yeah, I, I, I'm in the band now. Yeah, he peed you know? on it. He was like, this is my band. Oh, yeah. uh, and so we made we made him the band manager. And uh, he's, he, he's he's just a talented guy. Uh, mm-hmm. I like I like also how vastly different he is from, from myself. Like... Some of my influences are like Deftones, uh, Ten Years, The Used, Nine Inch Nails. Like I'm, I'm Seether, I guess, because I'm supposed to. Yeah, uh, yeah Nirvana, like uh, Smashing Deftones. Pumpkins. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of kleptic to the uh, the whole '90s era, especially. Um, and it, he just fits so well in in that that category that I like. He's so much heavier, but. I can stick him in this, and he acts like it's it's nothing. But his technique is so, I don't know, un, untapped almost. What about Nick? Um, I mean, when I first started to listen to music, you know, everything I listened was from my dad pretty much. Um, I think I started out with, like, Johnny Cash and Oasis, like the old stuff, Led Zeppelin, Hard sure. Hat, everything like that, and then – you old, know, getting into old porn like, music. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> then getting into junior high and high school, it was kind of like, while I'm playing, I need to find different styles and stuff that I could play. And you know, like Drew said, Kill Switch got Deftones, um, Lower Definition, Say Us, and just random bands that like people don't listen to because I don't. As they're on lower record labels and not on the radio, just random stuff you can go on YouTube and check out. So I just branch out to any kind of style of playing. But um, I do like what we're doing. It kind of slows me down a little bit. But, I mean, <laughs> the accents you can make with any kind of tempo or anything like that, genres mixing together, it, it'll sound good. I think I think we lend ourselves to, to not – I hate to say the word radio-friendly, but um, – just Every this, one of your songs is three minutes and thirty seconds. Hey, I can't help it. It's, it's like an inner clock. I'm like, this song is too long at three minutes and thirty five seconds. Um, <laughs> Once it's three minutes thirty six seconds, that song is out. Yeah, we throw it away. We can't um, do that song. Nick, Nick is really good at adapting. Nick is uh, he, he's he's very he's much heavier than me, um, and and I appreciate that because if you if you left me to write all the songs. And and to to do everything by myself, I'm pretty sure you would just slit your wrists. 
by the by the end of the album and (laughs) i mean i'm pretty angry guy but he he helps me kind of kind of get you know some of the anger i have and i want to i want to to push out he gives me the right riff to yell over really i mean but he's he's a fantastic member and and i'm really glad he's a part of this as well yeah well so what what's your songwriting process like uh, you know is it more collaborative or do do you each kind of bring something to the table and then you know how how does that work for you guys for the most part uh i basically ignore them completely (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah, it looked like drew wanted to talk man (laughs) yeah drew had his hand up he did i I I wanted to stop that immediately uh no go ahead drew i'm just messing around well like for the first for the first one raining of course he he'd already pretty much had that written as far as lyrics and melody but as far as structure you know i think that's the one we cut was raining is the one we're right talking. but yeah. you know it's it's one that if anybody's been on our page uh, the several people <laughs> several people <laughs> dozens <laughs> the dozens. dozens there are dozens, dozens. dozens of us nine and a half people that Dude, like our stuff i respect the arrested development reference right there yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, dozens! so like the people that have heard us the people that are close to us people that have seen us on the page you know they know what raining is and that song was pretty much written but not structured and i think i think that that comes into it a lot it's not so much being able to write something it's being able to put it together so uh when tom when tom brought brought me in that was something that was already done but a lot of the other stuff is that so it's so different from what it started out as and a lot of times tom will come in and he's like okay i've got these lyrics this is kind of what i'm thinking and, you know, and 20 minutes later, it's a completely different song. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and to put it in a nutshell, that's pretty much the writing process. We find something that fits and run with it. As as far as, like, how the songs are, are, are birthed, um, <clears throat> usually I'm sitting in the bedroom, and uh, I pull my iPhone out, turn on that little crappy voice memo system, hit record, and breathe real heavily, uh, <laughs> close my eyes and just pray that this isn't going to suck as bad as I feel like it does. And I, I, I just, when I close my eyes, it's like a, a, a nightmare almost. And it's situation after situation after situation. I don't know what's going to come out to be honest with you. I, I close my eyes. I start playing. I, I start talking. And for the most part, lyrically, I think most of the songs don't get changed very much. It's more of just like, putting the course here or the intro here or or whatever i feel like i I write fairly decent enough yeah and then he wakes up in the morning checks the voice memo and goes like what was that yeah (laughs) yeah and then (laughs) how was i yeah (laughs) Yeah, i like i like send everything i do to jacob and jacob's like yay or nay and uh there's only one that i've said nay to yeah i mean tom's a great songwriter true enough I, i don't i think everybody yeah, we were all we all thought that was a B side, so. Well, I mean, not. I never not heard it. So. Well, well, thanks, um, you bunch of dicks. My, my, my point is, that, that wasn't, that wasn't going to be my. I think we can all agree that that song was not good. <laughs> this song is shit. Get it, it out of here, like Tom. Donald Trump. When I said that, I, I think we can all agree. No, I think <laughs> I write the best songs. <laughs> the, the, they are the best. They are the best. They're big. They're huge. <laughs> China is going to download them. We're going to make music great again. So No, I, I think we can all agree that Tom is a really good songwriter. He's a very like, simplistic songwriter. But it's it, it. But he sells it. You know what I mean? And, and there's so much passion in it. And I think... I mean, yeah, there's there's a song every now and then that I have to... Yell at me for go it? Go like, oh, I think what we can do that chorus are you again. Doing? I don't think I've ever said that to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, though. But, I, but uh, I mean, Tom, I Tom's just a great songwriter. And, yeah, he sends these demos, and I say, yes, pursue that. And uh, and then and then he, the next thing I know, he's sending me a demo with – I haven't heard – Nick is Nick is the baby. Nick has got the yeah. next one, and the next hit, one's gonna been be amazing. For two months. Yeah, yeah he's two months old. Talk he's and grown a lot. Walk and dude, this I grew song. a beard in, in <laughs> thirty freaking days, man. That's the the song that's coming up that's that that, that Nick structured is fantastic. I mean, it, it's gonna be the shining symbol, almost of of, of our growth. Which one is that? 
Uh, I don't think we have a name for it yet. What's the song about? It, I think the course says it all. It's people are always taking and taking and taking, never really giving back. And it's just, you start to question yourself after a while. And then you start giving people like sarcastic remarks. Like they're like, you know, you should do it this way. And you're like, really? So, so tell me how I should do it. Like, <laughs> you know, show me how to do it better. Um, but I don't, I don't know what to call it right now. Uh, if we could steal steal anything from C there, I'd love to call it burrito. Today's a, a burrito. <laughs> but you know what, man? Like that's that's taking and taking take like that Tom is like the most giving dude. And I think uh that's that's really interesting that you say everybody's not everybody, there are certain people that take. I mean you're constantly giving. Yeah. You know? What a nice, what a nice, there, there, there's been some stuff that's come up recently. The reason I bring it up, I'm, I'm going to say it like people were taking from Tom and he's just constantly giving love, you know, everything. And, and then people are taking that and then turning against him. We've all seen it. You know, I think, I think I try to write on a relatable, like everyday phrases, things that we say all the time to, to really connect with people and situations that I think, uh, everyone's seen and I don't do it intentionally it just it just keeps happening So where does the name Solarist come from? Oh my god. <laughs> Drew, unfortunately, I think hates the band name the most. And uh, uh, fuck you for that. Um, I think that's where the E comes from. But uh, Explicit. <laughs> yeah, um, right? I think it's an awesome band name, Drew. 
Yeah, I mean, I I actually um I I thought that I made it up. Um as a as as dark of a person as I I can be, I kind of uh kind of try to to lend myself to a more light light seeming uh title. So, I was like solar, the sun, you know, depressed people don't like the sun, but I don't want to come off as super depressed all the time and negative. So, I was like solarist like a soloist like someone who does everything alone because okay, i okay. kind of felt alone a lot sure way more meaning than i thought it did <laughs> i just thought it was a cool name <laughs> yeah I, I put some thought into it and I, I looked it up and googled it and there was like nothing for it and then all of a sudden now i'm seeing all this bullshit with all these people like renegades of solars by the way i'm coming for you uh, <laughs> don't be taking my bad name dude that's wrong <laughs> but yeah i think I, I think it comes from a pure place is that your ex-band members <laughs> <laughs> well drew you you seem to not like it so what, what's uh what's your beef about it yeah what's your beef it, it, yeah. let's talk about that so much, it's not so much that i hate it it's not Lies. so much that, well i mean dude i've told him from day one like I we like should the change stuff, that. but you should change the name. We should definitely change the name. And you know, <laughs> I, I hate to go back and reference Dave Grohl's speech at South by Southwest, but uh, you then know, don't. Well, I'm gonna, you're gonna do it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> no, hey, look, you can reference Dave Grohl anytime you want. I'm cool with that, man. Damn right, Dave Grohl. I mean, shit. But uh, anyways, he he was talking about so eloquent, you know, explicit. <laughs> he was talking about all the things that bands do in the order that they do them, and you know he was talking about his experience. But uh, you know, it's like the first most important thing you do is you come up with a band name, and it's got to be. And his band name so is the good. Foo Fighters, dude. Yeah, and, and like I'm getting <laughs> he can't to that talk point. about that. Can I'm we bring up point, Dave Grohl for a second? <laughs> I'm getting to that point. See, they jumped ahead of the story. Because they know it already. But, uh, you know, Dave Girl's talking about how important it is. And he used all these words. He, you know, going out of his way to talk in circles about how important it is to get a band name. And then he makes reference to how he doesn't even like the name Foo Fighters. Anyway, but, you know, the name Tom digs it. And there's enough at stake for that name. I, I don't hate it. I, I mean, there's more than than just that as well. Like, I I really believe firmly in a one word name band, and so I put like months of thought into it. And I mean, that's I, what I, Jonathan Davis did with Corn, you know. Yeah, you it want took something him three weeks to figure out to write well, the like, K backwards. Corn, hey, Slipknot. Primates, I know a guy who has the tattoo you know, with tool. the K turned correctly. <laughs> that's pretty funny. What? Yeah, let's not get too deep into that, but um. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be memorable, easy for someone to, to like Nirvana. I think it's probably one of the best band names. I, I know a lot of people hate Nirvana, and yeah, I, I, obviously I grew up loving Kurt Cobain and, and Nirvana and Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic, but uh, and even Pat Smear, I believe, was the guest guitarist. <laughs> oh no! But I mean, like. The name, it, it's legendary. It's one word, easy to remember. It's a staple of time. It 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 was the name itself had a lot of meaning, and, and especially in Kirk Cobain's songwriting. Um, but yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> I believe Pap Smear didn't he win the Nobel Peace Prize? I don't <laughs> years back. I'm not sure of that, but Doctor Pap whoever Smear, that guy his is, his name was Pap. Smear. <laughs> I need that motherfucker in my band. I'm replacing Nick with Pap Smear as soon as he shows up. <laughs> the dude could jam, though. Like, I mean, anything, like, in utero, I think, was the Nirvana album. Anytime you see, like, live performances, it had him in it. And that dude, I mean, he just goes off. He, he's a little spontaneous little fucker. That... Explicit. <laughs> 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 I wash with Lever 2000. If any of you guys out there want to be just like me, I use Lever 2000 Calvin Klein. Okay. So, okay. so what's this? So what's, what's this next about? song about? Yeah, let's talk about I digress. Next. Yeah, yeah. Getting way off the point here. What's uh? What's the next song about? Which one's the next song? Starting over. I think starting over is it. Uh, it was start- one of the. It was the one of the two acoustic. Uh, 
Sort starting of over, songs. yeah. Starting, um, over. starting over is a song that comes from a place of of feeling like uh, I I hate I really do mean this. I hate telling what what it feels like for me because people have have so much better responses than I do. But for me, it's it's a place of 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 getting tired of where you are, uh, learning to accept that the the people around you aren't going to change and you just kind of uh giving up packing your bags moving leaving the situation and and starting anew whether it be with the clothes on your back or you know a, a sofa and a love seat you know just trying to make things better for yourself I can't quit if I, if I can, I can't fail Cause I'm trying and hoping I, I Just couldn't find out what you are Tom first approached me about wanting to to record. You know, I, I he he showed me some of his demos and and I thought they were really cool. But starting over was, I, I heard him play starting over live. In fact, he wrote it the night of, the, the day ni- of, the, yeah, the day like he, two hours prior. two hours before he played a little open mic, and I I heard it at the open mic and thought it was absolutely beautiful. It was like an epiphany. You know what? I did not mean to sound so close to that, and and. I'll, I'll, here's a little secret about some of my songwriting. When I'm writing music, I don't listen to anything else. Like I don't listen to anyone because when you do that, I kind of feel like you get trapped at trying to like recreate a, a feeling that you you've gotten from another song and for better or worse, sometimes more cases than not, I, I feel like it's for the worse. You're trying to recreate something that somebody else has already done. And, and <laughs> With my tuning, I never really would have thought that it would sound so close to to a stain song in my life, and 
I have not even a huge stain. No, I hate stain Whoa, almost. Bro. I know. <laughs> I, 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 I do. All that now. <laughs> yeah, I just, me personally, we all like different things. And stain is probably the least influential band on my life. And probably the most on mine. Yeah. So watch what you say. <laughs> right. But I, I like the, I like the diversity. So, um, when it, when it, when people are like, oh, well, it kind of sounds like epiphany. It's kind of like, well, fuck. Like I didn't listen to anything. I wrote that from the heart. I, I didn't mean to. The only thing I, that's similar. I apologize. The only thing that's similar is the chord progression. It's a beautiful song. Period. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're talking about music here. This thing Music has been around since we've been able to talk and express ourselves, dude. You're bound to recreate something that somebody's had. Well, Drew, what I'm interested to know is is why music? For each of you, why is why is music the way you've chosen to, you know, express yourself? It, it, you know, I, I like to ask everybody that question because everybody has a different answer, but at the same time, there are some common threads. So why is it music that is, you know, the way you've chosen to express yourself? Okay. Well, for me, the most obvious answer, and I, I'm, I'm guessing the most relatable answer, is that music gives me that outlet. It gives me something I can do, something I can listen to. Whether, whether I'm playing or listening, music can dictate my outlook on life at the time. You know, I mean, there, there's, there's been a bunch of times because you know I, I like the heavier stuff, man. And you know, and I would have people sit there and talk to me like, "Why would you listen to this stuff? This stuff would make me so, so mad, so angry." And I and makes me want to build things. Well, no, I mean, it just for me. You know, if I'm having a bad day and I want to listen to Pulse of the Maggots by Slipknot and just let it out on the ride home from work. You know, my wife thanks me for that stuff because I'm not getting so mad at little stuff at the house because it gives me that outlet. And then, you know, as far as playing the stuff, you, there's, I mean, I'm a drummer, dude. I get to beat on stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, I get to get rid of all that aggression. Uh, music for me, I think is a way for me to leave something behind. Let's say I die tomorrow and uh, there's there's really not much to show for my life, but I have something to leave my children and, and leave people that I cared about to understand me, uh, understand life, uh, learn from me, uh, deal with things better, whether it be you know, a girlfriend or boyfriend breaking up with you and, and, and you taking it terribly, it can, hopefully I can, I can help somebody through something even if I'm not here anymore. I think that's, that's my biggest thing. Cool. That's cool. That's a cool outlook on that. What about Nick? I mean, it's, it's good to do it, man. It's like a stress reliever. Um, I mean, you're having a bad day at work or a good day and you just feel like, and you feel like writing something, and um, I say when you when you're writing stuff, you kind of whatever emotions you got it really tells you what the, what you're writing about. Sure. Yeah, it's a one more song, uh, and this is another solo one that Tom did. You, you guys scaled it back and did more of an acoustic set tonight. What, uh, what's this last song? You know, just uh, give us what you can about it. You know. Um, well, just, just to back up just a tad, the reason we chose to do the acoustic set for you instead of doing just a live performance is we really wanted to show people we could break it down, simplify it and give them something that, you know, not everybody wants to hear like distortion on guitars, but some people like acoustic stuff and maybe these songs can reach a wider demographic by, by expanding our doors. Um, the new song I think focuses for me on relationships, kind of being in one that you're stuck in, not really leaving when you know you should, uh, kind of loving someone more than they love you and hoping that, uh, hoping that they'll accept you, uh, and, and never wanting to let go. Uh, that's what, a lot of the reason the course is, I'm holding on too damn tight is kind of is, is like a pointless 
pointless approach. Like, you know they're not going to love you, and you, you just can't let them go. You guys have had a great time thanks so much for having me out to your uh, your practice space really enjoyed uh talking with you and and, and recording you listen to you play um where can where can people find you online uh contact solaris.com is an easy one uh you can hit our facebook from there and basically you're funneled so you can reach and grab and buy and sell and steal everything you want you guys on twitter solaris, anything like that anything. yeah we got it we got a twitter um, um search for solaris I mean, yeah, like if anybody were to just go to their, you know, YouTube and type in S O L A R I S T <laughs> raining, just in case anybody needed the spelling for solarist, you know, it, it'll pop up our stuff and, it, and then you'll be able to find more of what our stuff is. And you can do it on Facebook as well. You know, pretty much type that in and you'll find something that's got to do with us. Cool. Well, make sure you check out Solarist online. Contact solarist.com. That's the easiest way to get to them. This show is on, available on rootdoctormedia.com. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Podcast Addict, and all the other ones, too. And uh, make sure you subscribe, rate, uh, and review. That helps people find us. Um, easiest way to find all of that is just to go to bit.ly slash hoodoo music podcast. Thanks and, for having us. And always remember... Have your cats and dogs spayed or neutered. <laughs> That's what you wanted to say. We're also available for all bar mitzvahs, birthday parties, Most and christenings. christenings. <laughs>